the first experiment we're going to perform is the water content of soil. This is a very important experiment that will allow us to utilize a piece of information about that soil in various other types of experiments and also allow us to be able to determine um, how the soil is behaving on various sites depending on how the water uh, it, how much water is in the void space. Now this is our buddy Carl Terzaghi, we remember him. He said a uh, long long time ago he said in engineering practice difficulties with soils are almost exclusively due not to the soils themselves but to the water contained in their voids and we've learned this in class that this, the water really makes up the overall behavior of the soil. It, it defines how the soil particles are going to behave and uh, and really creates complexity um, to, the, to how the soil behaves and we're going to learn a lot more about that throughout the semester as well. And the reason we start with this experiment is because uh, determining the water content of soil is something we will do almost every experiment from here on out. So it's important that you understand how to determine the water content of soil uh, for any situation. Today uh, you'll see that we just have a loose soil that has moisture in it and we, were gonna, we are going to determine the water content of that soil. But in the future we may have an experiment where the soil is either saturated or it is wet or uh, it has been tested in some way and we need to determine the, mo determine the moisture content um, sometimes before utilizing trimmings from when we trim the soil to a specific size and after the experiment has been completed uh, when the test is done and the soil has been sh either stressed or or compressed or or altered in some way so this is a very important experiment and that's why we start first you can read about this experiment in um, the textbook uh, chapter 4.3 and in our lab manual uh, DOS num uh, experiment number two so our learning objective is pretty simple. We're going to determine the water content of soil uh, in the laboratory and we're going to utilize uh, the ASTM D2166 standard. And I put this on here too in the classroom, but I think it's important for us to think about how, uh, why, the, why we have uh, to determine the water content of soil. What's the importance of it? And so um, think about how, this, how this, the soil, the sand, behaves at the beach at various levels. We talk about this in class as well. When you first get to the beach, get out of your car, get your cooler and your chairs and your umbrellas and all of that, and you start to walk, and the soil is very dry. It's very loose. It, it, it falls apart. You sink. It's hot if the sun is out. But as you get closer and closer to the water, there's more moisture in the, in the sand. It begins to have a little more strength, and as you get right up to the water, when we have saturated soil we're walking on, it becomes very firm. And that is because the void space is now not filled with air, but it's filled completely with water. Uh, and it, um, there, is a, uh, there is surface tension going on, and there's a lot of strength to the soil. And then if you go further where the waves are actually moving and you're under the water table, the soil begins to um, lose strength again. So uh, think about what the water content is for all of those phases of the sand when you go to the beach. And of course there are many other uh, opportunities for us to think about water content in various types of soil, but that's just one example. So before we get started on the experiment, let's remind ourselves about how uh, soil is, uh, is made up. Remember that soil consists of solid particles and void space, and that void space can be filled with either water or air or both, and sometimes it can be filled with other, other matter like uh, oil or uh, contaminated water or, and many other things, orga organisms. Um, but for, for this class, we're going to concentrate on uh, understanding that there, the, there, we either have soil particles, solid particles, water particles, and air making up the entire uh, structure of the soil. And so if we think about that structure of the soil, the skeleton here in this slide, you can see that we can break down the volume of each of those particles and put it in a three-phase diagram, as you see on the right side of the screen, where all of the solid particles can be so-called melted down into one volume the water into the other volume and the air makes up the remaining portion of that volume of that soil skeleton. And then if we look at that void space, we can see 
that either the void space can be filled completely with water, completely with air, or a combination of both, which is how we usually find soil. It's a, typically a combination of both. If all of the void space is filled with water, we call that saturated, and the saturation level is 100%. If, we, if the void space is, has no water in it, it's just filled with air, then it would be a dry soil or zero saturation and zero percent saturation. Okay, and we're actually going to look at uh, in this experiment. We're going to definitely look at the dry soil. So uh, quickly, ref re we can refresh our minds about phase diagrams and see that we have um, the volumes that we talked about for each phase on the right side, and each of those volumes has an associated weight to them or mass, depending on which. Uh, what units uh, you're looking at and we know that mass and weight are related by uh, just the acceleration due to gravity and we also know that um, the volume of air has zero weight or zero mass um, but the rest is uh, pretty self-explanatory other than the volume of the void space which is a combination of any volume of water and any volume of air um, or vice versa you can you can have the volume of the void space and not know the volume of water and air and have to determine that and having the water content of your soil helps determine all of those values. So based on the phase relationships, we can see that the moisture content <coughs> is the ratio of the weight or mass of the water content and the weight or mass of the solid particles. Okay, So it is actually just the weight of the water divided by the weight of the solid matter multiplied by 100. We typically report moisture content as a hundred percent. This the standard range for moisture content is between two or three and fifty percent. We can have zero moisture content as well in some soils, but that's very rare. Um, and yes, you can have mo uh, moisture content larger than a hundred percent in highly organic soils because what you have there is the weight of the water is actually higher than the weight of the solid particles, and that would create a ratio that is over one hundred percent. And that then we can look at the degree of saturation which we mentioned before and that is just a ratio of the volume of the water and the volume of the void space so it's actually what how much water is in the void space itself and degree of saturation is often reported in percent as well so we want to multiply that ratio by a hundred percent we know and we've already mentioned dry soil has a saturation percentage of zero and saturated soil has a saturation percentage of 100 and you cannot be over 100 percent saturation because we're only talking about the percentage of water in the void space that exists within that soil okay so now we can get to the actual experimentation pro procedure written out uh, according to ASTM D2260 now there are a few variations from the standard that we're going to perform in the laboratory which we'll talk about here in a second and we see Bunsen and Beaker on the screen that means we do have an experiment so the first step is to is to determine the mass or weight of the container we're going to put the set the wet soil into because we have to know how much to subtract from the overall soil we can't just put soil onto the scale and uh, and, and then put it into a container and hope that we get all of it off the scale it doesn't work that way so we need to understand the mass or weight of the container that we're going to use usually it's a dish of some kind and oftentimes you'll want to have a lid on that dish, so make sure you weigh the dish with the lid itself. Okay. Next, we uh, obtain a representative sample of the soil and place that into the container, making sure that we clean the outside of the container so it doesn't have any extra material on the outside that we can't measure later. Once we have the, the wet soil in the container with the lid, we put the lid on top of it so it doesn't lose moisture and immediately go to a scale and determine the mass or weight of that dish with the wet soil in it. The next step is to take that container of, of wet soil, remove the lid, place it into an oven, and that oven must have a, a temperature, an internal temperature of 110 plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius. And you place it in that container or leave it in the, in the oven until the soil is dry, which means all of the water has been removed from it. Typically, that's a 24-hour period. Okay, So step four, once you uh, remove the dish with the dry soil from the oven, immediately place the lid on top of that dish so we don't attract any uh, hygroscopic moisture that that is contained within the air, and place that 
and then we allow that uh, dish to, to cool slightly and then we determine the mass of the dish with the dry soil in it now okay and then taking all of those three measurements the mass of the container empty the mass of this of the container with wet soil in it and the mass of the container with dry soil in it we utilize the equation at the bottom of the screen and that equation is the same equation that we saw on the previous slide with the phase diagrams when you take the mass of the wet weight minus the mass of the dry weight that is the mass of the water if you take the mass of the of the dry weight minus the mass of the container that is the dry weight of the solid material multiply that by 100 and you determine the moisture content now why is the moisture content so important I've already talked about how determining the moisture content throughout various experiments is extremely important to know what the behavior of the soil is at various moisture contents and we will see that through various experiments throughout the semester but also I want you to see that there is a list of some just a couple derived equations and a couple of these are very important in determining other properties of the soil if we have the moisture content for instance the second equation there we can say if we have if we understand the weight of the water or if we understand the weight of the solid particles we can determine um, the moisture content or if we have the moisture content we can determine one or the other we can also have we can also relate that to the specific gravity of the water the the wet unit weight of the water so there's a, there's a lot of variations of how to utilize the moisture content this the third equation listed on this screen is a very important equation as well and that is the saturation percentage times the void ratio equals the moisture content times the specific gravity of the solids and those are very important aspects to uh, to determine one of those missing um, variables there when when looking at design and and explaining the properties of soil the equation at the very bottom of the slide does not have moisture content directly in it but it does have a relationship between the wet unit weight and the dry unit weight and you must have the moisture content to be able to determine one if you under if you have the other the dry unit weight is difficult to measure typically the wet unit weight you have and if you have the moisture content you can determine the dry unit weight and that's the purpose for seeing this so now we're going to see a video of how to perform this moisture content test 